All right, Foot Clan, we have a monster show today. It's super important because if you're priming up for the playoffs, you need a playoff primer episode. We've got every position group, the best matchups, the worst matchups, how you should look at, you know, do you trade these guys away? Do you just understand that they have tough matchups? Prepare yourself for the playoffs on today's episode. Enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, November 16th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Big, big show. Playoff primer episode. The producers back at full strength. The Borgogan, the Judge, and Al back in the building. Say something, Al. <laughs> What's up, Foot Clan? There you go. <laughs> you, you put the camera on, you guys, and you're just, well, we'll just sit here. Hey, I waved. From what I understand is sometimes... The podcast audience can't hear you wave. They also can't see that camera. Oh, good counter. Yeah, but there's just silence. Do something. Dance, Dance. puppet. I'll be better. <laughs> Dance, puppet. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that there's a sense that none of them want to be the alpha of the Deucer's Alley. We all know who it is, though, right, guys? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, we all know. It's Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. You weren't it's supposed Brooks. to say it. <laughs> the, the biggest bank account wins the day. Uh, playoff primer today. We're going to be talking about the each position group, best stretches or best playoff matchups. This is big stuff. And worst. And I think it's going to tease out a lot of conversation about what you do with certain players because um, I don't know. I have questions. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thursday night preview today. NFL news to talk about, including some blast from the past <laughs> player news, which is fun. Yeah. Reminder to everybody out there, we will be live on Spotify, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, as we are every single Wednesday for Spotify Live, the party room. Oh, baby. And uh, look, the Megalodon episode is coming soon as well. Oh. Thank you. No. Thank you. Wait, that's one week from today? That is one week from today. Guys, I need to go to sleep. Oh, mercy. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh wow, that was a little creepy. It's like a villain. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, that's fair. Al, we do need to make sure we've got the smelling salts on hand oh, yeah. for the episode. Yeah, halfway through. Of course. They're I mean, always within arm's reach. Are they? You have them over there? They're behind this curtain. Okay. All right. So well, technically, <laughs> yes, but it would be a bit of an ordeal. So, to get them. Like if you give me your arm <laughs> and three other arms, I can connect them and then reach them. So smelling salts, energy drinks, and we'll have the Megalodon episode. If you're new to the show next Wednesday ahead of Thanksgiving weekend, uh, we got a supersized episode. It's basically the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday show all wrapped into one. And um, it's the show of the year. Yeah. Always is. Like, hopefully, if you listen while you work out, you're going to get a good pump that day. Oh, yeah. And if you listen while you mow the lawn, you might need to mow your neighbor's lawn. I, That's all I'm saying. Who does the uh, that hardcore history show? Oh, yeah. Carlin, is it? Is yeah, it, uh, Dan Carlin. Dan Carlin, I think that's right. Like yeah, but he just he writes us. He's like, take it easy over there, Right, because he's got the, what, the four, five, six yeah. hour shows. And he's like, goodness, that's a long podcast. Yeah, yeah, our hosting fees will be extensive. <laughs> But Brooks will cover them. Yeah. Uh, current Megalobowl leader right now, the Shark from Jaws 3D, cannot be stopped. 20 and 0. Wow. The, I, 16. This is either uh, just a glorious story of the Shark from Jaws 3D cruising through the through the entire Megalobowl as the champion, which the, the fact that it's a shark related name in the Megalobowl, I'm not saying. I'm yeah, just there's saying. There's a little causation here, for sure. <laughs> but. So it's either an incredible story or the jo or uh, shark from Jaws 3D there think, are, thinks they're hot stuff and then just loses at the end. There are twenty thousand yeah. people in this thing. How can it be the same person every week? Uh, I'm rooting for you at this point. The shark from Jaws 3D twenty and zero. 
Very impressive. To lose in round one. <laughs> I shall win. But I do encourage everybody who is playing in the Megalobowl to go to megalobowl.com. Make sure you know what's going on with uh, yep. league rules heading into the playoffs so we don't get as many emails saying, wait, I didn't know this was happening. We've had the rules there the whole year. Yeah. You and, knew what was happening. If you can read. And if you're listening now, the rules are pretty simple. Uh, the trade deadline is uh, shown in, in your in your league. That's about to happen. And uh, waivers lock when playoffs start. And playoffs are 15, 16, 17. Prepare yourself. Top three teams from each league get into the playoffs, not the top six. All right, let's do some ride or die. Ride or die, presented by Chevrolet. I did just realize something. The podcast listenership, those that aren't watching the show, will sure. not be able to see this, but... Um, we may need to update the like ride or die graphic. I don't know. I think it's actually really good because it's like you can ride with Pittman, okay. who was in that uh, beautiful Chevy with me, or you can have Brees Hall. And this is that ride would be or the die. die. Okay, yeah. maybe so, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just dropping him off at the I'm hospital. Just, right, just recover Dude, quick, my you man. You ever been in an ambulance? It's thousands of dollars. A ride from Jason in a hot Chevy? Yeah, free. All right. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing this for free now. Mike, well, I mean, he'll chip it for gas. Thank you. Uh, Mike went undefeated last week on Ride or Die. All right. Um, we did it. I would have as well. No. No, I don't know if Juju was going to get there, but he got hurt. It knocked me out of it. And uh, pretty good showing last week from the three of us. Yep. Week 11, Ride or Die, Brooksy. What do we got? All right, guys, we're starting with Chris Olave versus the Rams. Will he be a top 16 fantasy wideout? And we chose 16 because earlier in the season, he hit that mark four weeks in a row, but has not done it in the past three weeks. Man. I mean, honestly, this has 100% to do with whether I think the team has the courage to go back to Jameis Winston. They do not. According to Nick Underhill this morning, he said that he would be surprised if it is not Dalton as the starter. That's not a guarantee. But he's a very plugged in beat writer. What? Yeah, are they, he's normally what are they right. Seeing? What are they seeing from Dalton? We're like, this is so much better. Interceptions, um, I, I, sacks taken. Are, are these stats are that sure? they want? Like, I mean, Dalton. No, right? I'm I'm saying this about Dalton. I'm oh, agreeing oh, with you. Oh, okay. Dalton <laughs> either throws an interception. <laughs> I thought you were. I thought you were uh, clowning on Jameis. I'm no, like, Dalton, I'm, is... look, I'm on Team Jameis. I think okay. it's better for Olave. I think it's better for. Me? <laughs> Me? It's better for the Saints, but the Saints are in a, a lost season uh, spiral as well. So I don't know what it is. Uh, the report before Underhill, before I heard that one, was, look, they, they're going to go back and check with the staff to see if his, you know, the the back and the, I think is the ankle, like some combination of injuries is enough to let him play. So Andy Dalton, since taking over as a starter, is 2-5. and five. I'm going to have to go die. If that report leans to Dalton, I don't think Dalton can get Olave over top 16. It stinks. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I will uh, choose Die as well. I'm going to take the field here. Olave is a great wide receiver, but the Saints are kind of spiraling, and so I'll, I'll take the field. If you want a case in the other direction, Mike, a lot of really good wide receivers on by this week. Waddle, Hill, Metcalf, Lockett. Sure. Um, so... Maybe more room to slide. It's, it's Evans, a, Godwin. It's yeah. a strong case, but uh, we're going to triple die. Well, then I'll change the ride. I made the case to my out loud, and then I convinced myself. So the old, the old thing, just yeah. trying to encourage yourself as you play Chris Olave for yet another week. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? You're not going to bench Chris Olave. Yeah, you're probably not. It's not like these have been – his games have not been disasters. No. I mean, 22 instead of uh, the top 16. 59 last week, though. Uh, all right, Brooksy, what do we have for our second ride or die? All right, guys. Darnell Mooney versus the Falcons. Can he get to just 10 fantasy points this week? You know that he can. Oh, you're riding? Oh, let's ride, Mr. Mooney. I'm going to go die. Mr. Mooney? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think that in with order... With who? I, I'm with the most recent speaker, gotcha. which is you, Andy. Gotcha. Um, there has been once this season, I believe, where he has uh, crossed that threshold without a touchdown. 
but I think he's going to need a touchdown to get there. And those touchdowns, they belong. They're look; those are down in Kokomo. <laughs> That's where those Re yeah, touchdowns recently are. They are. So. No, they're not. They're um, they're actually someplace else this week. Oh, okay. Uh, is this a David Montgomery pro? Nope. This is say, just, no running backs can't score. Just mm. Justin Fields. Chase Claypool. Oh, scores this. Wait a week. minute. Wait what? a minute. Where is this coming from, you monster? Wait a minute. Done. What? I have to put money on Chase Claypool now? Done deal. Wow. It's over. This is shocking. Chase Claypool what? into the end zone. Okay. Oh, you, I, you Look, it's not up to me. Right. I, that's why I, I'm saying. You are just the vessel. I'm, I'm the vessel I, from the message, and Chase Claypool, I don't, he's got to be plus two something, I, right? I mean, it's got he had one reception last game. He had eight yards. His snaps went down. Yeah, yeah it's going to be really interesting because he's going to get into the end zone this week. Amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Amazing. I mean, well, they can, can't even bet it yet. I'll okay. say. Because uh, they're waiting for my word. <laughs> they both can. Mooney and Claypool because, okay. they, they, look, the Atlanta Falcons, hashtag bad. Uh, Kurt Cousins, what's the line you have oh, for man. us, Brooksy? Top 12 quarterback versus Dallas. No. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can't make me. I think we're all going to go die yeah. on this. You better so change we, that we line. we got to move this line. where. Who who's gonna who's gonna blink first? He's been top twelve in five of nine games, which is why Brooksy threw that line out there. But Dallas, formidable defense, top fifteen. I'm dying. Yeah, I'll die. Top. Wait, wait, wait. You, does that mean you're? I'm setting the line over here. Don't okay. ask me questions. So Set the line exactly where you think that you'll ride. Yeah. And then where will you ride? Yeah. Seventeen. I will die. I would have rode at eighteen. All right, I'll ride with you, Mike. All right, I'll ride at seventeen. You guys got that? Okay. So, got it. Uh, yeah, Kirk, Kirk Cousins. <sighs> the Dallas defense, I mean, they just, you know, they just gave up some points this past oh, week. Oh, he could definitely do it. I mean, there's a need. You know, Dallas should be able to put up some points on, on Minnesota as well. So, it could definitely happen. They are – the Minnesota Vikings are the weirdest team. They're just – they play exactly the way that the other team plays. So, I guess that – should turn into a top 17 performance. All right, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. The big news is what's going to happen to my Twitter timeline when Chase Claypool scores a touchdown on sure. Sunday. Uh, um, prepare yourself. Now, I, if, if he gets a touchdown... I will literally be frightened of you <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, that will be terrifying. I mean, it's, yeah, great news from my from my Dino bench into my starting roster. Oh, are you moving him in? I I played him last week. Oh, okay. So you it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Eagles tight end Dallas Goddard unfortunately uh, is going to miss extended time of the shoulder injury. Um. We were just talking yesterday about after Kelsey Andrews, yep. who's the next best tight end? I changed my answer. It's not Dallas Goddard who is now out. It is slim pickings. Is it, it you know Dalton Schultz? I think is legitimately my three. It could be. Bummer. Yeah. Is this going to hurt Jalen Hurts? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's going to hurt Jalen Hurts. So we, you know, the, a lot of times you're tempted with mobile rushing quarterbacks to say, "Oh, well, you know, that maybe he'll run more." No, that's that's nonsense. Uh, good quarterbacks who are uh, great runners, they are even better when they're passing for a ton of touchdowns. Lamar Jackson's great, but he is not as good without Bateman right. as he is with Bateman. When, Mark Andrews. Right, and Mark Andrews and all those. So, yes, losing a very valuable middle-of-the-field weapon is bad. Now, Devonta Smith, he he might Maybe. get a bump up, but uh, it's not going to be a bump up for Jalen Hurts. All right, just to uh... – Talk about the Packers briefly. They waived Amari Rodgers. They designated Randall Cobb to return from IR. They signed D.D. Westbrook. Ooh. That's one of the blasts from the past. Hey, D.D. And then ESPN reporting the Packers will, quote, continue to um, focus Christian focus on Christian Watson as a major part of the game plan going forward. So there, there's your rundown of the Packers wide receiver room slash way to convince yourself to play him with confidence. It'll be interesting here, which I think you have to. Yeah, for I'm, me, like, yeah, I, I'm playing Watson, and I'm still playing Alan Lazard, but is Rogers 
back into that where you're like, oh, I guess I'm playing him as a weekly top 12 guy if they truly have two good wide receivers now. I think I'd love to see it for another week and see the momentum, but like, yeah, it's a possibility. You're going to see it at Tennessee. R Rogers, I don't know about that. Rodgers and Ooh. Russell Wilson are two of the reasons that I was on the die side of Kirk Cousins because I think that they are better plays this week than Kirk Cousins. Okay. Well, Cooper Cup. Yeah. He heads to IR undergoing a procedure on his high ankle sprain, what they call a tightrope procedure. The average return is six to eight weeks and not 100% until eight weeks. So you are waving goodbye to Cooper Cup, the number one receiver in fantasy until yeah, this injury. Yeah, you yeah. probably won't see him again this season, not no. just for fantasy. I don't think that the Rams will bring him back. But the fact that it's eight weeks to return to kind of full strength is a really nice timeline for any kind of fears, you know, the Michael Thomas, whenever I see it, like surgery on the ankle, I get the Michael Thomas fears. Sure. Um, so this is a much uh, nicer procedure. You do now have a clarity because he's out so long about how this wide receiver picture is going to look in Los Angeles. Allen Robinson presumably is going to step into the, uh, the Cooper Cup shoes. He they could. don't, they don't fit, No. but he's going to get in them. And try, and then Ben Skoranek will be involved, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby, mm -hmm. uh, what, Brandon Powell. Stop it. <laughs> Stop with those names. So I do think that there's a chance that you see, you know, if the target share for Allen Robinson rises, which we know Cooper Cup's, like, I mean, they got to play four quarters in this, in this, and they can't run the football. So it, it, targets, they mean a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So Allen Robinson could kind of be at least a, a floor type of PPR guy. Yeah, there will definitely be someone there uh, of value. Higby is a tight end, so he he gets you know a differently weighted bump up because all you need is a few more targets or receptions to be valuable at the position. But obviously we're going to need Matthew Stafford back from the concussion protocol before I'm confident playing any of those. I, I know, Jason, that your brain explodes when we talk about this topic. So I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Um, the last I saw about Matthew Stafford is that he's still in the concussion protocol and head coach Sean McVay, his statement, and uh, you guys can vet the exact quote, was something to the extent of he has not been told whether he really has a concussion or not. <laughs> that was my head. What? So he's in concussion protocol, but it was something to the may extent. May or may not have one. Feel free to break in, Kyle, with the quote. Do you have it? He just pasted it. Um, Sean McVay has declined to say whether he has been diagnosed with a concussion. What are we doing? And here's the quote. He said, I asked why he can't say either way. And he said, that hasn't been communicated to me. You are the head coach of the football team. I bet you could go find out. What if part of the NFL's new policy is concussions are secrets? Yeah, like Ooh, keep it a secret. Full keep hip it like the oh, full HIPAA. <laughs> like the That's right. Like, Doc, am I going to have my quarterback this week? I cannot tell you. Shakes I'm, an eight, eight ball. I mean, I, is that the new po <laughs> protocol? Like, I'm I'm bound by my my, my oath right. to the medical field. I can't tell you. It, I mean, that's a shock. What is state. going on? Clearly, the protocol. If anything, I think it's been clear that it's independent of the team more than ever. Yeah. Which I think is the accountability that the league wants. Is that look the coach. The player, they're not going to have a say. Which they shouldn't. So, it's, it's the right thing. We can we can joke and mock because we love to do that, and it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it's better for these but, players. Yes, yeah. for sure. Hard, worse for fantasy players sure. to understand what's happening. If the coach doesn't know, we probably don't know. Maybe Matthew Stafford's back. Maybe not right now. Vegas has them as four-and-a-half-point underdogs, so that does not tell me that. Maybe he's in Tahiti. We don't know. I don't Full know. Full HIPAA. Yeah. Uh, Here's big news, guys. Khalil Herbert, hey. who has been the more efficient runner in Chicago on IR with a hip injury. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. my. David Montgomery. We're going to talk about him today in the playoff preview. The speed at which they ruled him out in the game, it matters. Uh, and it mattered here. They He's seriously hurt, so he will miss at least four weeks. And, I mean, with the again, like just like the Rams, the Bears are out of it, and in four weeks, why do you 
bring him back. I get maybe you maybe you see if he's okay to uh, to go because the, the Bears have a very big decision. David Montgomery's a free agent after this year, and everything was trending that they're. I mean, if I'm running the Chicago Bears, seeing the way that Khalil Herbert is playing, I would let David Montgomery go and let someone else pay him. Let Khalil Herbert uh, take over. So that's that's a very that's a very tough decision for dynasty players. What's going on there? Yeah, the last month you've you've got over eleven carries per game for Khalil Herbert, and David Montgomery is obviously in the past and even this season has been the like bell cow type of running back that can handle the extra volume on his plate. I would expect him to have a lot of usage going forward. Yeah, and Tristan Ebner is yeah, the, is the backup um, who will get snaps. I I will say that's a minimum four weeks for Khalil. Yeah. His injury could end up being much longer. Yeah, but if, if you're in a, uh, I mean, probably not even a, a real deep redraft league. Are you worried about Abner? But dynasty waivers, he might be out there, and you never know. He's now the backup, and he's David Montgomery misses time. Abner is the next man up. All right, we have news on Najee Harris. Mike Tomlin said he's experiencing knee discomfort to go along with my eye discomfort in watching him run. Hey. Sorry, that was that wasn't very nice, and maybe this is part of the issue. But um, he doesn't expect it to prevent him from playing on Sunday. But the writing's on the wall; like more opportunities for Jalen Warren should be coming, simply based on where this team is at right now. I would agree. <laughs> All right, that was uh, rare. That was a pump fake. Rare yeah. dead silence here on the podcast. Um. Eno Benjamin released by the Cardinals. The Texans claimed him, and this then is interesting. Like the Eno, yeah, I like because Damian Pierce has been getting everything for the Houston Texans, and uh, the addition of a running back at this time, uh, I, I think you have to at least raise an eyebrow of where the Texans do they want somebody else to at least take some of the work away from Damian Pierce. And they can't rely on Rex Burkhead. My eyebrows are both very low. Okay. Jason, I, are you raising I, any of your eyebrows for... I'll raise one eyebrow, yeah. yeah it's, the, 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 I'm not saying he's taking over, but if like Damian Pierce on a bad team it drops down to the 18 carries instead of the 20-plus that he's getting, that's that's a big difference. I think you'll have a few touches. Um, and in the passing game, you know, Rex Burkhead is just completely unusable and so you've got a player here in Eno Benjamin that you know over the last month month and a half and the NFL has been getting three four five seven targets uh he's a valuable player he immediately becomes one of the best offensive players on the roster so I don't I don't think he's going to come in here and just split time but I would agree right. that he he'll he'll take three four touches away a game and the it, another just the kind Seahawks of a, went in on him, by the way. You know who else did? Who the Kansas City Chiefs oh, tried to pick man. him up. They were going to replace Clyde Edwards-Alaire with Eno Benjamin. Yeah, I, I nobody Whoa. out here in Arizona really understands the uh, on the surface without the right. kind of uh, interpersonal yeah. dynamics. Yeah, nobody understands it from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. Why he was happened. jettisoned. We might see a little bit of insight. They are on the in-season hard knocks, and so you you cut a player like oh, that. They're scrubbing that. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, but that's often what what gets shown is no. The, you that'd know, be those interesting. Uh, and come on, gentlemen, let's finish the news. Yes, the right David Johnson. Oh, David Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he that is going to be the last time you ever get to say it. But I'm thrilled. For the man, because I know this guy works very, very hard. The Saints have signed David Johnson to the practice squad. You burned bright, David. Yeah, man, he is. I mean, I from being out here, we've spent time with him. Like, it's incredible what these athletes have to do with, you know, at this stage of his career, he's working out every day, yeah. putting film together just for a shot. So go get him, DJ. We missed you. All right, that was today's news notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with the playoff primer. Before we jump into the primer, I do want to I want to congratulate both of you. It's been literally years mm -hmm. since that 
David Johnson refrain came out of your lips. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect unison. The uh, muscle memory was strong. I that was actually, a, so, so impressive, I, right, I, Al? I mean, that was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I actually think that might have been our best one wow. ever. Wow. I, I felt I was transported back to my young 30s. Yes, and that was so good it may get him off the practice squad onto the active roster. Let's go. It won't, but <laughs> we but, can dream. But he did not get <laughs> off the practice squad. Into the primer we go. Playoff primer. All right, a couple disclaimers at the top. Playoff matchups are not everything, right? They are Correct. a piece of the puzzle. They're not going to have you benching your elite studs because of a bad matchup. They're going to inform you. And if you have that information, even if you're still playing them in bad matchups, it helps you construct your roster for the playoffs mm -hmm. because you know certain great players in very difficult matchups, maybe they aren't ceiling players that week, or you can at least bank on a ceiling. So then you can build your roster out the other way. So, um, boy, uh, you know, last year, 2021, there were some league winners that came out of nowhere. It, Trey Lance was the quarterback 10. Yeah, he was. Against Houston in championship week. Russell Wilson, the quarterback two against Detroit in championship week. Let's remember Rashad Penny's oh, let's remember him, playoff yes. run. Devin Singletary, the RB2 during the playoffs. Sony Michelle. Yes. You hear that, Al? Rashad. Sony Michelle winning championships last year. Oh, he did. Rashad that dude Penny. sucks. <laughs> That's fine. But Rashad Penny, Sony Michelle. I mean, Jason and I in our co managed Dynasty League, we. Oh, I yeah. mean, just the full. I would piggyback on Penny, Jason, Sony Michelle carrying him right to a championship. It was yeah. glorious. And I'm on Ross St. Brown. The playoff king. Yes. Uh, Arizona, Atlanta, Seattle last year. We knew the schedule, and he dominated. <laughs> Thank you. There he is. <laughs> so let's start at the quarterback position, guys. Uh, fantasy playoff weeks are 15 through 17 in most leagues, unless you play in a league that has eight, week 18 championships. Don't do that. Which, I'm sorry. Don't yeah, we highly recommend to not do that because at the end of the year, you're going to have people that got you there like Josh Allen. Well, maybe not Josh Allen because they're not winning as many games as you think, but uh, Jalen Hurts or whoever uh, will be sitting in that last week not playing for your championship roster. It's really, really, really dumb. So the best quarterback schedules. Give me some of the names. Lay it out for me on players to pay attention to at the quarterback position. Well, speaking of Josh Allen, I think let's just throw his name out there. It's not, uh, you know... Surprising you're going to play him no matter what, but when you've got the best quarterback out there who has one of the best schedules out there, it's pretty nice. Plays Miami and Chicago the first two weeks of the playoffs, so congratulations to the Josh Allen managers. I don't even mind the Cincinnati matchup at the end of that run. I know Cincinnati is, is giving up uh, you know, slightly fewer points to the quarterback position, but Joe Burrow against Josh Allen in an important week. Look, the Bills haven't won as many games recently as we thought they'd win. There will be more of an edge to the end of their season. They're out running away with this division and hiding with Miami competing. So I'm excited about that, that Miami game. Oh, boy. That one looks really exciting that first week of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, another name that jumped out to me from this group of good matchups that will be getting weapons back and has been disappointing and is – uh, easily acquirable right now is Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. quarterback for the San Diego or Los Angeles Chargers. Let's go back in time there. Yeah, uh, he has been a super disappointment, and it's not his fault. If you watch his games, he's looking good, but he does not have weapons to throw the ball to. Mike Williams will be back by the fantasy playoffs. Keenan Allen should be back. Might be back. <laughs> should, should and might be back. If those two players come back we've been talking about the rest of season schedule for the chargers in the passing game it is very good he gets tennessee in the first week of the playoffs uh the colts in week two he's certainly um a player that should be much better at the end of the year than he's been throughout this year if he gets those weapons back and has good matchups yeah uh, yeah it's it's good looking I think the, the quarterback that I'm most interested in, because if you look at if you look at the best matchups, the best of the best, I don't know if I can like, I don't know if I can swallow the pill 
the best. The, oh no, the Zach Wilson. Zach pill? Wilson is the oh, best no. schedule. Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle. The last those three weeks. That's the best of the best schedule wise. I no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm, I'm not doing it at the I quarterback mean, position. Like I'm happy uh, that Detroit game to say like maybe he's in the stream of the week. But sure, yeah, I'm not. I'm not targeting. But, what do we top twelve player, quarterback in four of nineteen career starts? I'm going to need more than that yeah. before I'm like if I turn what over about, my championship run to Zach Wilson. I've been looking at a emergency option in case Josh Allen was to get hurt. Like I think it, in a dynasty league, I'm saying, hey, I need another quarterback just in case. And Jimmy Garoppolo, he could is sitting on my bench, and I realize Seattle, Washington, and Las Vegas. That final week of the year, the best yep. matchup possible for quarterbacks. Yeah, he he is certainly in the mix for the streaming candidate that has a schedule that says, hey, I can help you even in the playoffs. An injury happens to a really good team, he's the quarterback that you'll probably be picking up. But ironically, the other quarterback that I really wanted to bring up and I think could have a strong he, – he could bring some of his championship rings to your hand is Thomas Brady. Tom Brady has sucked because he hasn't been throwing touchdowns, but he's on pace for well over 5,000 yards. He hasn't actually looked bad. Chris Godwin, we've been talking about, he's coming back from a really bad knee injury. They're in their bye week this week. I I believe the rest of the season he's going to be a very good wide receiver. The touchdown finally came this last week. And Tom Brady, if the touchdowns come to Mike Evans mm -hmm. and to Chris Godwin, uh, the, the, the last two weeks, Arizona – and Carolina are very good matchups for him in those fantasy playoffs. I think Tom Brady is another one of those uh, really good acquirable options for the fantasy playoffs. Let's talk about the worst quarterback schedules and basically the question of do you care? Because like, do you care enough to make a move, make a transaction, exchange any of these guys for the aforementioned names? The worst four schedules that we wanted to highlight was uh, Tua, has he's in Buffalo for the first week of the fantasy playoffs. Then he has Green Bay and then New England. So that's a pretty brutal stretch for yeah. Tua. Um, and he has been – I mean, he's undefeated in all of his starts this year. They've been one of the best offenses in every metric. So you push that against these matchups. Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, those four guys have pretty brutal matchups. Fields plays Philly and Buffalo. Um, you know, Chiefs Patrick Mahomes ends against Denver, and that one really concerns me for Championship Week. Yeah, that's it's tough. They're a great defense, but when it's Patrick Mahomes, I'm taking the schedule out. I don't care. I agree. Um, he, he, I will, I will ride or die with Patrick Mahomes, and I think he could have a great game against a great defense. Uh, you, you know, the first week of that, um, the playoffs, he's got a bad matchup against Houston because quarterbacks don't score a lot of points. You don't need to throw the ball against Houston. You can run it very easily, but this is a team that doesn't run the ball. They And this is a team that doesn't really care that much. about Andy Reid, historically, has always just been like, oh, yeah, we should have. Sorry, I only had seven <laughs> right. rushing attempts. I just, when you got, I'm not Whoops worried. Whoops, the doozles. He's, he's going to have a great week against Houston. Um, and I'm, I, I know as weird as it is to say, I'm not really worried about Justin Fields either. I was going to say the – I think you will know by then if you need to be worried about Justin Fields. The 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 matchup here coming in Week 12 on the road against the Jets, that'll be another big test to see if the play style of Justin Fields can be impervious to matchups. And then uh, Week 15, I mean, you're in the playoffs, I guess, at that point, but coming off of the bye week, or, or, uh, Philadelphia, like – if you make it through Philadelphia, I think that you're playing him against Buffalo without any hesitation. So the two concerns are are possibly Tua and Joe Burrow. Those are the those are the good quarterbacks in bad playoff right. schedules where you might want to poke around at. Um, you know, would, would you, you trade high on Tua? Like, would you go uh, try to work out a Lamar Jackson deal? Lamar Jackson has a good playoff run. I think he's just as good as Tua. Yeah, I, w I would. I would rather have Lamar Jackson in the playoffs than Tua. If you have a bye week, that's where I'm not worried about Tua because you have – you can skip the Buffalo week. Green Bay, I'm not that concerned about him putting it together, his weapons, and what they've been able to do. 
That's a tough one. He's because he is. hasn't ha- he doesn't have a a history of being a dominant pro. He's got seven games this year, so that one's the most nerve wracking of them all to me. Running backs, guys. Let's talk about them. Beautiful playoff schedules. I don't know if you get more <coughs> fabulous than what <laughs> you don't. Derrick Henry has in the winter month. Los Angeles Chargers and Houston for the first two weeks. That is the 30th oh. and 32nd ranked run defense. Now, Dallas, more of a challenge in, in sure. the final week of the year. But holy Henry. Yep, yeah. and my timeline, I don't know. I'm sure, Jason, you had it too. My, oh. my Twitter timeline this very morning was, was very full of snow in Vermont. It is uh, snowing like crazy. So the, the Yeti is I, – I don't know that he can actually transform back he cannot get out of his his uh, his beast form. Uh, yeah, uh, Derrick Henry He's stuck should, being Derrick, a yeti. <laughs> Derrick Henry should have a great game uh, in prime time this week. His playoffs uh, should be great. He, just stay healthy. That's all that matters. Yep. Derrick Henry, stay healthy, and you will be very happy. He'll help you get you to the playoffs. He'll help you get to the championship. Alan Kamara. Yes, sir. Very delicious playoff schedule, and I think he's a player you can target right now. Just based on the down performance, the the losing Saints, uh, the momentum, regardless of what they do at quarterback, Atlanta, Cleveland, Philadelphia. Sure. Um, the Buccaneers and what we're figuring out with their running back room, Rashad White, Leonard Fournette, one of the best schedules in the game on by this week, but Cincinnati, Arizona, Carolina. What do you do with the Detroit Lions? Uh, they have the Jets, their first playoff week, but then Carolina and Chicago. So it's a it's a good uh, string of three games. Jamal Williams is a touchdown. Just he's he is a factory. He's just producing touchdowns basically every single week. What are you guys doing uh, with DeAndre Swift? Not asking for anyone in particular. Uh, just a good friend for a good friend of mine. Are you? buying into either trying to trade for Jamal Williams or going after DeAndre Swift with with the hopes that by that three-week stretch, DeAndre Swift is back and a in the timeshare where, where it's not you know him getting 10 snaps a game or whatever. How are you handling that backfield to exploit those matchups? I am not going after DeAndre Swift. Uh, we, we saw last year him unable to really come back from the injury to supreme relevance. We've seen it this year again. Now, there's a lot of time left. Exactly. So I'm not out here saying there's no way that Swift could get back to full health and be the dominant leader of this time shirt. That can happen. He's clearly the better player when it comes to two players at full strength. He is explosive and outstanding. But it, I, I genuinely wondered would I rather have Jamal Williams than DeAndre Swift straight up? Like if if I had to, you know, lock cut, one in for the rest of the year. Yeah, I think I would rather have Jamal Williams. I I, I tend to agree with Jason on this one. Uh, this if you weren't getting production from from Jamal Williams, there's more incentive to try to force a less than 100 percent DeAndre Swift into the offense. I don't think they feel like they have to do that. And he's, I mean, that concerns me so much that they said he will not be 100% this year. And let's say that DeAndre Swift does come back to full strength and he gets out there. Well, remember, week one, he was awesome, and Jamal Williams brought in in the goal line and still scored touchdowns. So it's not like, I think Jamal Williams is a good trade for target. Him and Alvin Kamara, those are the two running backs to me that I'm going and looking for because I think they are slightly undervalued there's narratives that are against them their playoff schedules are great and the two players are great Alvin Kamara right now off the bad week while he was injured to start the year had some bad games but we've seen awesomeness from him and in yeah, he, the had right, a, he had a good stretch this year yeah in the right matchups which is in the playoffs I think Alvin Kamara is a league winner I want to mention the Chiefs backfield they have Houston Seattle to start the playoffs if Isaiah Pacheco is a thing if it is a two-man Band, he's interesting. The Bears, David Montgomery, yeah, a really nice stretch for him and likely him alone. And then when you guys were mentioning Zach Wilson earlier, my first thought when you're like, yeah, I don't have the courage for that was, 
eh, but I might be interested in Michael Carter. Sure. Or even James Robinson because they have one of the best stretches. Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle to end the year. Defense in the running game is what they want their identity to be. Um, it also gives me more confidence in like a Garrett Wilson down the stretch uh, just because of that schedule. Uh, it's interesting to me. Yeah, I, I agree. James Robinson is – I guess he he was the RB sixteen, so the 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 manager that has him currently is, you know, you're not coming off of two just really bad performances after the trade, but of of running backs that could be acquired in trade right now, I think James Robinson is one of those guys and went from twenty two percent of the snaps, six opportunities, to forty percent of the snaps, fifteen opportunities. He's interesting. Let's talk about the bad running back matchups really quickly here. Uh, and, and you guys tell me if there is pivot necessity coming your way. Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon and James Conner. Uh, James Conner is brutal. It's Denver and Tampa Bay. Those games to me scream, if he doesn't score, you will be crying. Yeah, that the, those are really difficult, and right now I doubt you're going to get enough value from James Conner off of one good game. Trade deadlines will be passed, you know, in a couple weeks here when he's doing well. So you're just going to have to kind of hold your breath, hope he gets you there and that you've got more depth. Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon, those players are concerning to me where I love Alvin Kamara's schedule. Obviously, Derrick Henry, <clears throat> if if you've got someone like Joe Mixon, I think you can turn him into Alvin Kamara and I would do that. I think you could turn a 55 point week. <laughs> into a six-point week, Alvin sure. Kamara. Like, if there was ever a time to swap those players, I agree. It is – it's tough, you know. You just rode him to victory. That's a mm -hmm. that's a tough emotional thing to do with how Kamara's been playing. Um, But, you know, the Raiders have been struggling. Yeah. The, the, and so Josh Jacobs is a tough one with New England. Number one run defense is your first playoff week. I think that tr just trying to turn Josh Jacobs into s preferably somebody else, if you can – uh, I think that's an option for me. James Conner, I'm it, I'm not as worried about it. The The Cardinals offense could be full strength by then. And the, the James Conner thing is just pure volume and touchdowns. And if the, if the Arizona Cardinals offense is going, the chance of him scoring a touchdown remains pretty high. Well, I, I'll say this. I mean, Denver, I think we all respect that defense. Tampa's very good against the run. It might just be something where, like Jason said, you're not going to trade him away off of one week. You'd like to ride him to some good weeks as you head into the playoffs. And maybe you're just making accommodations for your roster, not expecting the biggest game from James Conner. And so sure. you're, you're loading it with some other players simply because of tough matchups. Saquon, it's not pretty, but he's Saquon. Yeah, he's Saquon, yeah Barkley. Saquon Barkley and Kenneth Walker both have bad playoff schedules. I don't care. Uh, James Conner does not have the standalone – uh, ability by himself to overcome a defense. Agreed. He needs the Cardinals to be good. He needs to get on the one-yard line. He needs to have volume in the passing game. Saquon and Kenneth Walker, they are athletes at a level where bad defense, ho-hum, they're shutting everything down. Up oh, there's a 60-yard touchdown run, so you're fine. I'm not worried about the matchups. Yeah, and I, I wanted to find a hole in that argument for Kenneth Walker. Because he went ten for seventeen last week, and there's yeah, this, but read and they play the other San, part. They play they play San Francisco. He he had eighty seven percent of the snaps, and he caught enough passes to put him into double digits. Yep. So, um, he's in auto start for sure. Wide receivers with the best schedules down the stretch: the Texans, the Saints, the Steelers, the Cowboys. Jason, you you've been putting it into the context of who you are actively targeting: the Steelers have Carolina, Las Vegas, and Baltimore. Are you actively targeting Deontay Johnson and George Pickens? I am not actively targeting cause them because they still rely on a rookie quarterback that I don't think is going to throw enough yards and touchdowns this season. I do think that they will be spot starts if you have them and uh, could be good plays that week. But I, 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 don't, I don't believe that I should be giving up much to go acquire Steelers receivers right now. Mike, what about the Saints who have uh, a week 14 bye, but then they have Atlanta, Cleveland in the playoffs, the rebirth of Chris Olave at some point here? Uh, comes back to Jameis Winston. If Jameis is in, which I think they're, you have a, you have a chance that he's in by then. Uh, but, it, but at the, at the worst case scenario, 
Jarvis Landry may be on your waiver wire, and if you are in a deeper league, you might want to pick him up as as he's back. Michael Thomas will not be back, and there's there's a chance that Jarvis is a like a wide receiver three for that stretch. Uh, Texans with Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins. Uh, Same for Nico. Like Nico's just he's, he's Nico's equivalent, been better than Cooks. I was gonna say he's equivalent value to me as Brandon Cooks in terms of a spot start and is on waiver wires. So yeah. they have Kansas City, Tennessee, and Jacksonville, and he's a big bodied wide receiver with touchdown upside. He is more of their future than Brandon Cooks is. And I, then C D Lamb with the Cowboys looks like a delicious end of the year. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get C D Lamb, I don't think, right now, off of a, a yeah. great game, having Dak back. But if you have C D Lamb, this is great news for the playoffs. Brandon Cooks is someone that I would I would try to trade for only because it will cost you next to nothing. And we know he is a quality wide receiver. At the end of the year, he might be feeling like he's playing for showing off for other teams, trying to get a trade acquired in the offseason, or, uh, you know, he wants to play for a winner. The schedule is good, so I'm I'm fine having him as just depth on my bench, who, if he gets it together at the end of the year, he, he doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, I, I get it. I agree. I feel like I've been I'd, saying that. Re- I'd rather go get Deontay Johnson. I feel like I've been reading that book on Brandon Cooks for eight weeks in a row, and I find I finally gave up. I finally made a trade. Package him and some other players to go get Rondale Moore because I just got tired of hoping that the Brandon Cooks of old was emerging. But you're right. He has the ability. I just don't know if the heart is there or the game plan anymore. Uh, that's my concern. Yeah. And, and I, and you know, earlier I said I wouldn't trade for uh, the Steelers wide receivers and I would trade for Brandon Cooks. That's a value. That's because I think you can get Brandon Cooks for next to nothing, but maybe you can get Deontay Johnson cheaper than I'm thinking. Because I would agree with you, I would rather have Deontay Johnson than Brandon Cooks they're, straight up. They're both very similar. If you're just trying to make the statistical argument, right now Brandon Cooks is the wide receiver 52-36 for 391 on the season. Deontay, wide receiver 42, 47 for 435. I mean, they're they're very, very close in what they've actually put onto the field if you're if that's part of your trade argument. Uh let's talk about the worst wide receiver schedules. I mean, there are some some situations that are concerning, but are there any that are going to motivate you to move these guys away? The Dolphins have the tough schedule that Tua has, but Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are just no. auto starts, right? The, yeah, the the only one where you might consider preparing would be the Jaguars, where mm-hmm. like Christian Kirk and company, they seem to be able to exploit good matchups. I mean, Zay Jones, the the spot start king. I mean, he'll he'll come through. He'll. he'll You'll have four for forty or whatever, but Dallas and then the Jets and the in the Houston Texans again, which is the weirdest thing for that to be a negative wide receiver matchup. But it's because you can run on them. Like Travis Etienne will have a good day, but if Christian Kirk, if you are really relying on him, I may look for reinforcements. Yeah, Christian Kirk is the one that off a great week. If I'm looking playoff bound, I'd be trying to turn him into a Chris Olave. Uh, who's coming off a bad I game. I think you could easily do that. Yeah, so I, I would rather have Chris Olave preparing for the playoffs with good matchups wow. than Christian Kirk against Dallas and the Jets' first two weeks. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense to me, too. I will say there are a couple of committee wide receiver rooms that you want to avoid for the playoffs. The Chiefs and that ensemble have one of the worst playoff schedules for wide receivers, and again, Travis Kelsey's their number one target. And then the Rams have a terrible schedule. Green Bay, Denver to start. You're not going to have confidence in non-Cooper Cup options in, in Los Angeles with that offensive line, quarterback issues. I think you avoid the Chiefs and Rams. And then with the Vikings having a tough schedule, you might avoid Adam Thielen for Possibly, the end of yeah. season. Jefferson is, of course, uh, a, a auto start every yep. single week. Mm-hmm. All right, we're moving on to the tight end position. Oh, Kelsey. <laughs> Kelsey, he plays Houston, Seattle, and Denver. <laughs> Hey, Brooksy, uh, I, I wanted to know, did you see any trades in our Dynasty League recently that might have gone through? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, I, that uh, let me break the news to you. <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I saw it. I put Travis Kelsey on my roster, and I'm excited because his playoff schedule is Houston, Seattle, Denver. Uh, Kelsey is uh, uh, just going to win championships again. Yeah, he, he certainly will. The only thing that will stop Travis Kelsey from 
helping you win a championship is if he's injured for those games. Because if he plays in them, you're talking double-digit targets all three of those weeks and massive performances. Uh, you, you just brought it up. Dynasty leagues, Travis Kelsey managers, if they are out of contention, out of contention, they are looking to trade him for for a lot. Yeah, they want a haul, you. and it'll cost you. Andy, you gave up quite a haul of younger, uh, you know, more future oriented picks because your team's great. You're going to win. You're going for the championship His right credit now. Card is maxed out. It's maxed out, but honestly. I think the odds of your team winning a championship are very high now with Travis Cousins. So this is one of those, if you're in a dynasty league and you are, your team is looking great, you're set up, go look at Travis Kelsey because this, it, it's just a trade that makes sense for both parties in a ton of leagues. Yeah, and send the birth certificate around. I mean, that that's the, the persuasive piece for a team not in contention. He'll be 34 in October next year. Whew. So, uh, you know, 33 going into the year, but 34 during the year. That's your compelling argument to pick him up now. Um, Greg Dulcich, he has a good matchup. If he continues to see involvement in the offense, I'm not going to say he's a lock to be your starting tight end for the playoffs, but if he gets he's involved. locked into that Arizona matchup. You know, we didn't get to it earlier in the news. We we didn't mention it, but Jerry Judy is potentially playing this week. Just mentioning. <laughs> Come on. He is potentially on. playing. Um, I'm saying that because I, I think you were looking at some of these guys, Sutton, Dulcich, yeah. as going to take advantage of multiple missed weeks. If Judy doesn't play this week, he'll be back next week, and that offense is a bad. Uh, the number one uh, schedule adjusted uh, playoff schedule yeah. for the tight end position is Tyler Conklin, and you know we it, it matches up with Zach Wilson, who I don't trust, but hey. he is. Brutal. Uh, it, I'm not saying go out and get Tyler Conklin right now to prepare for the playoffs, but I am saying that should injuries happen or, or things of that nature, he is the name on the waiver wire that you might want to pick up if you're if yeah. if you're playing great. You know, maybe maybe you have Travis Kelsey. And he goes down to injury later in the season. Conklin has a very good playoff run. Is available in a lot of leagues and has <laughs> had. had you know, a handful of really good games this year. He is a, a mystery man of two weeks ago, 10 targets, six receptions, 79 yards, and two touchdowns into the following week with basically the same exact snaps with one reception for seven yards. Well, and that's why the matchups matter, right? Tight ends, a lot of times teams have the personnel to guard what a tight end does, and sometimes they don't. So the fact that he has such a good matchup for that position in those weeks maybe you can uh, play those to your success George Kittle nice playoff matchup for him he's a little nerve-wracking right now he feels he doesn't feel like the old reliable George Kittle he feels like that did you get the right game George Kittle yeah, he's volatile I'm terrified man yeah I so yeah, I, you were you were right thinking about some some significant I, moves I tried to trade a uh, pick swap in their favor to move from George Kittle to uh you did you Dalton followed, Schultz you followed through huh? yeah I did and it was turned down what with a swap in their favor yeah I so it it's uh what are you doing man yeah, I know. Not I'm, you. I know because how are you rejecting that trade? <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, don't I think know. we said Dalton Schultz is the. Was this a playoff contending team? I mean, not really. I mean, kind of. Right in our league, that's he's a tough one on the cusp. But it's a pick still, swap in there. I mean, let's let's for, be clear. Jason made the offer because he wants Dalton Schultz over George Kittle. Yes. Yeah. For, yes. For safety. All right. Defenses with the best week 15, 16, and seventeen. Here schedules. we go. This is big stuff. The Giants defense plays Washington the Chiefs play Houston the Vikings take on Indianapolis might be my favorite the Packers actually these two Packers against the Rams and the Cardinals against the Broncos the Cardinals I keep bringing this up because it doesn't seem like it but there's one of the best defenses in football they're number five in fantasy they should have scored again this past week and even without that they were in the you know nine point total the Cardinals against Denver is really juicy to me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The Russell Wilson is terrible. That offense is in shambles. Um, and this year for fantasy defenses, you are going to want to put them together on a week-by-week -week basis. 
Um, this will be individual to your situation. If you have a bye week coming up, if you look like that, you're going to focus on week 16 and 17. But I don't think there is a defense that you can pick up and just completely ride through the playoffs. Uh, unless, you know, you, if you've got um, the Eagles. Uh, That's or, a brutal one, though. They yeah. have Chicago. And then Dallas. In, in You know, they're a great defense, but they also showed vulnerability against Washington this past week. Like, I would play the Chiefs against Houston and not have a risk. Like, that is that is a philosophical thing. I'm curious where you guys stand. Like, I I had, like, the Giants defense, right? And they played well last week against Houston. Now, I had the choice this week to go and use them against Detroit, but there's a little bit of risk there, there with is, Detroit. Yeah. Or I could, like, sign Washington to play against Houston. I really – I prefer the safety of not having that accidental blowout and going with the pretty good defense against a terrible offense. I don't know if you guys side That's, on the great defense side. I, I'm with Andy. Of I want to exploit quarterbacks. I want bad offensive lines. I want quarterbacks that can get rushed and throw me interceptions and, and take sacks and fumbles. That's, and not going to score 30-plus. Yeah, I, that's what I prefer. I, I worry less about the how many points I'm giving up and worry more about how many sacks and interceptions yes. or pick sixes I could get. So, for instance, the, the Chicago Bears um, are the matchup for the Eagles in, in week one. Now, the Bears – On the road. Right. The Bears could score 30, and the Eagles could still be a good defense because of – interceptions sacks fumble returns for you know the, the 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 bears offense is going but they make a lot of mistakes and then just get the ball back and 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 score more so i'm focused on whatever i think can be a big bada boom play because in the playoffs you're playing great teams they're going to put up a lot of points and when you get that 12 to 15 fantasy points from a defense it's hard to lose yeah, I think, it. like I said, it's a philosophical decision. Are you willing to risk to get the reward, or are you willing to play it safe? I mean, it's not like you can't get those benefits out of the Chiefs' defense against Houston, and they can be opportunistic and score points too yeah. without the risk of scoring 30-plus, you know, Justin Fields. So the first week of the playoffs, my favorites are the Packers and the Cardinals. I, I really like the matchup against the Rams for the Packers. The Packers have good defensive personnel. The The Rams are falling apart. They lost two more offensive linemen this week, and their offensive line was already as bad as it gets. Week 16 matchups to pay attention to. Broncos defense takes on the Rams. That's awesome. The Browns take on the Saints if they can't figure things out. The Titans take on Houston. I have been targeting Houston every week because it is giving me a six- to eight-point baseline uh, the Bengals, they take on the Patriots. That one's a little scary up in Foxborough, but again, weather may play a part in it your decision-making for these three weeks. There's going to be some cold games. The 49ers defense is great. They take on Washington. And then the Eagles, again, you have that tough decision. They take on Dallas in Dallas. So the Eagles are on the road against Chicago and Dallas to start the playoffs after being a great defense. Um, little risk-reward situation there. It is a divisional game. You flip it. The Cowboys have to take on the Eagles, and the Cowboys are a great defense. Yeah, those are those are really um, – that's going to be tough to confidently play those two great defenses who got you to the second round of the playoffs. But if the Broncos were available against that Rams defense in, in that week or the Titans against Houston, I would pick those teams up and play them over the Eagles-Cowboys. This is the time of year, too, where, look, there's a lot of options for your bench. You could play backup – you can put backup running backs on there as gambles. You can ensure your own running back. Or you can pick up a defense for the next week, roster two defenses, and not be playing the you know, pay big money situation. You might not have fab or waiver priority. That's the way you have to prepare. In week 17 championship weekend, the Eagles finally get their break. They're at home against New Orleans. It's delicious. The Chiefs take on Denver. Good golly, that's going to be enjoyable if you have the Chiefs defense. And then the Giants. Yeah. They take on the Colts. I'm I'm a little bit I'm a, I'm avoiding this juicy Colts matchup thing mm -hmm. um, because they've set a precedent with the Ellinger non Jonathan Taylor part of their season. I'm less locking in a team like you know the Giants against Indianapolis with Jonathan Taylor healthy and Matt Ryan back under center. 
uh, just sharing my kind of thoughts for this past week. Agree completely. The The Indianapolis offense is totally different. Um, and speaking of totally different, in that championship week, I think the, the team that's going to win people uh, championships with a pick six, calling it now, is the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, when they're facing Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers. I was, yes, I was offered a chance to stash the Tampa Bay defense, but I have um, about 3% confidence I can get to that championship game in one of our leagues, so the, I uh, wasn't willing to do it. Sure. When it comes to the um, playing against the Colts, I, I'm going to let it shake out a little bit. I agree that I'm not rushing to, to lock that in when you're you know, months away. But the beginning of the season... Oh, yeah, Matt Ryan's When they had Matt Ryan machine. and they had Jonathan Taylor... Things were things were not working out for them, and defenses were scoring uh, a ton of points against them. So I think that the Giants d don't write it off. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the strength of schedule tool, you can find it on the website, jointhefoot.com. We update it every week, and so you can um, you know keep up with the teams that are trending in different directions. This is not a exhaustive list. Like if, if teams suffer injuries, backup quarterbacks, you want to target them opportunities for turnovers like jason said big point opportunities it's thursday night preview time thursday night breakdown the tennessee titans at six and three travel to green bay to lambo to take on the four and six packers the DraftKings sportsbook line packers minus three the over under is 41 in this game you know, you saw some encouraging signs from the the Packers to, to eke out that win, save their chances this year. I mean, if they were sitting three and seven right now, sayonara. Yep. But four and six, Aaron Rodgers behind center. You always give them a little bit of hope. Titans are a very good team that has struggled on the offensive side of the ball due to, you know, a lot of limitations. You know, it's been Malik Willis. It's been an injured Ryan Tannehill. It's been a lack of A.J. Brown. Um, this game, Packers are favored. It's a low over under. What are you uh, projecting fantasy wise for these Titans and Packers? Well, as we brought up earlier, there is snow on the ground in Vermont, quite a bit of it. I do think in this cold weather game where you're talking 20, you're going to be in the 20s, um, you're not going to want to be tackling the big Derrick Henry coming at you. The Packers uh, run defense is middle of the pack. They, they, I don't think they have the personnel to shut down Derrick Henry. Few do. And I expect Derrick Henry to have a big game here in prime time. Uh, outside of Derrick Henry, that's the end of the list for the Tennessee Titans that I'm willing to play. I, I want to stash Traylon Burks uh, and hope that he can show something special, but I'm certainly not going to uh, start him. And then there's not even like a, there's not even like another stash on this roster. Yeah, I guess I have a little bit more concern that Henry might not have a huge game against Green Bay on Thursday night, but you're not going to – it's not going to affect any decisions that you're yeah, making. They're allowing the fifth most rushing yards in the NFL. The It's more of just an observation that you know I'm curious about. Where, uh, like Jason, he's on your team. Mm -hmm. Oh, I felt every snap he's missed. The – the past two weeks, it's interesting. Of He popped up on the injury report just a couple weeks ago, and in weeks 9 and 10, he's had 17 attempts and 19 attempts. Like That was the – he had not been under 20 attempts a game since week two. You dream about 19 rushing attempts for other running backs. But right. for Derrick Henry, it was, it was low. And if you look at the snap percentages for Derrick Henry, to speak to Andy's concerns about yeah. not a guarantee of a great game, they have gone down the last two Sub weeks. Sub 60. What I believe is happening is with whatever this foot issue – the you know the every team you go through your 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 packages your practices you put together what we're doing in these down and distances and they have not been involving Derrick Henry in the longer down and distance packages over the last two weeks which is why when he doesn't pick up a good chunk of yards on first down you see him come out of the game playing fewer snaps less involved in fewer routes run. And and that and I, could continue, but I do think that the matchup against the Packers with the rushing yardage they have given up, uh, Derrick Henry, I think you're going to see more what you saw against Kansas City Chiefs, 
where sure. he's just efficient. Yeah, he's just much more yeah, efficient. Yeah, it's. I agree. I mean, I think it's going to come down to those first and second down big plays, like you said. It has been six quarters. I mean, you got to remember his big plays were in the mm -hmm. second quarter of the Chiefs game. I'm more concerned about does he have a quarterback that can take some pressure off of him so that they can't stack ten in the box. Well, Tannehill is back. I mean, last week it was not good. Yeah, but the he's more recovered. I think I saw a note that he was kind of he's back back. Um, Aaron Jones. Yep. Yep. Lazard and Watson, I think you can play them. I agree. Uh, the matchup is good against Tennessee at home with some momentum. And then uh, I think we're probably just staying away from the roulette of Robert Tunyon and any other wide receivers and probably staying away from A.J. Dillon. I agree. Uh, this offense, the reason Dillon was in an encouraging ad in the offseason was because you thought they'd be a top-tier offense around the goal line a lot. That hasn't happened. So uh, it should be a very interesting game. Check out all of the rankings and the start sit tool at thefantasyfootballers.com. One question coming in from uh, the fans is, if you did have Watson and Lazard, who are you starting? <laughs> I would very, I, I would definitely be starting Christian Watson personally. I would definitely be starting Christian Watson as well. I think that he is, um, I, I think he's a good start this week. And he is who they want to be the one for this team, but it's 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 tough because Lazard's been good all year. Watson's had one good game. Yeah, and hasn't I, it been a, a little of a dry spell for Mister for the Lazard King? What are you what like wide receiver eight, ten, twenty one? Well, I mean, Lazard Lazard has been like low key, really really good. For fantasy purposes, you skipped thirty-five and fifty-four. This past week was fifty-four. I was yeah. I was overlooking this past week because that was that was the first real. If you skip his bad, bad games, game. he's been amazing. This no, I was going to get to it. Of this was the bad game. Christian Watson took everything away in that game against the Dallas Cowboys, but up through then he should bounce back. Alan Lazard has been 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 fantastic, and it's it's it is very tough with the the, the breakout game of where to go. I'm going back. If I have to choose between the two, I would go back to Lazard just because we have a season of him. But, yeah, but not but, with Christian Watson on the field. Yeah. Those I, games, no, I, those I, games I agree. were without it's, Watson. And they it's were, risky. I, so, I, no, I don't blame you for thinking he's going to be a reliable target in this game. He's always a chance of a touchdown, too. So, no, I look, it's it's tight. Yeah, Watson this, had four, four, four receptions, right? Yeah. So, he, had, he had eight targets, though. So okay. The, yeah, that was, this was the first time that Watson had been on the field for any substantial amount of time. Week one, he was there 66% of the time. Uh, Lazard did not play in that game, but then after that, he just was banged up, going in games, leaving them with concussion problems, with other problems. So he finally played a full game. We saw greatness from Christian Watson. It's very exciting. Uh, but So going between the two of them is very difficult. All right, one more reminder, party room today, 3 p.m. Pacific on Spotify Live, 6 p.m. Eastern. Join us there on the Spotify Live app or the Spotify app. One more bit of news, Kyler, it's being reported, could miss another week or so. So you you may have Colt McCoy and that fine, finely tuned Cardinal offense this week against San Francisco. Hey, look, I'm not downgrading anybody yeah, without I'm Kyler not. Murray. Well, was the, best. Mean, the, the quarterback, you're not going to stream Colt McCoy. You're not going to, but Rondell Moore, best game of the year yep. with Colt McCoy. DeAndre Hopkins targeted, looked great. No Zach Ertz. Those two players are going to get a lot of targets. Agreed. Um, Kyler's not really affecting my view of them right now because Colt McCoy is a uh, he's a professional quarterback. Yeah, no, he's Colt McCoy is a fantastic backup, but you're not playing him against the 49ers. No, no. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else you guys want to add? I need a nap. It was a busy day. Yeah, there's a lot on today's show. Yeah. All right. Well, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. Never not working. The matchups, the starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker story continues. Thank you for joining us. Check out jointhefoot.com for our fantasy football community. We'd love to see you there. And we'll see you this evening on Spotify, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.